Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here, and welcome on into my long-awaited review for the LEGO The Office set. This is an idea set, which is set number 21336. This will be available beginning on October the 1st and retailing for $119.99 USD or $149.99 Canadian. This is actually sent to me early by LEGO Slash Land to do a review for. It was up for pre-order on LEGO Shop at Home, but sold out very quickly, as well as it was also on pre-order for Walmart. Not sure about if that sold out or not, but I believe this is going to be an early access at Walmart, where everyone else will be getting it three months later. This is a D to C for now, like normal ideas and big sets. They will be at the Lego store and Lego shop at home on October the 1st. So you could pick it up that day. Probably the easiest and best so you can get some VIP points. But you can actually see on screen here a picture of all of the stickers in this set. There's 53 numbered ones, but in total, because some of them are repeated, there are 61 individual stickers that you put throughout this whole thing. I know that some people don't like that. There are some printed pieces, but uh, still... That's a lot of stickers. That's breaking records this set for the most minifigures in an idea set and stickers by far. We will actually have a separate video doing a compilation of breaking down all that separately. And if you notice anything I don't, please let me know so I can include it in that video. I'd love to make sure that we cover everything. So stay tuned for that video. But let's jump into things because there's so much to go through. All right, so here it is. The most incredible set one of my all-time favorite sets of all time for my favorite television show of all time i am so excited here to go through things i think of course we do need to start with the front entrance and work our way through the actual office so out here in the hallway that leads to the other offices in the building like vance refrigeration you've got here the dunder mifflin paper company sign which means that this is before the saber acquisition uh of course and you could see the door opens up and swings that way you've got this transparent uh panel there but uh, if you look through here you can see here there's actually a window looking into Michael's office. There's no blinds or anything, which there probably should be here, but it's sort of, it's it's a really large divider that you can't really get access to unless you open up Michael's office, which is a separate play feature, which you'll see in a bit. But yeah, you can open it if you want to and uh, not really sure why you would since it doesn't actually do that in the show. You'll notice that there's actually a fire extinguisher there in the wall, which I think is really cool. There's no sticker, by the way, on the door, but there's a stud to open it. Uh, this front couch there, you could actually sit a couple of different minifigures there if you want to, or you could even have them lying down as, uh, you know, Michael has done and uh, moan and complain near reception. Um, on this wall, in case you were curious, there is nothing underneath the couch, no weapons that are stored there from Dwight's, but that is actually something that happens in the set. I just thought I'd mention that in case you were curious. I know some people thought that already, but uh, this painting, it's a lot more simplified than the one that actually appears in the show, but that's fine. You've got this uh, behind the coat rack here, which is a very iconic prank, I feel like, from uh, Jim and Pam. If I were to remove this here, you've got a little lamp on the desk as well as Pam's purse down there, but there's this little Dunder Mifflin two by two tile as well as a no smoking sign which i feel like is pretty crazy to get in a set uh we've also got an award here uh we've got a reference to one of the set designers friends as well as up here this little blue tile not sure what that is a poster for teamwork and then in the back here next to i think that's meant to be a printer we've got uh, the prank where they send a message from future dwight to present day dwight the reception desk there, you could see that she's got, it's really cool. I love the angle that this is on, but she's got a couple of different things there. She's got a pen and a little, I, I guess, a pen holder, as well as a cup there, a bowl, as well as a little reception sign, which I think is great. One of the 61 stickers. Looking at her desk here, I'm going to remove Pam so you could see how her desk looks there if i angle this up so you can get a better look from above you can see that she's got a phone there as well as a computer which if you notice that that actual tile it is a conversation that she's having with jim because you'll see it flipped 
on his computer screen when we look at that. But I love how they've got her desk there. She's got a mouse, a keyboard, and the phone there on the left. Over here, we have another little award there, as well as the photocopier, which can, like, it's a really great build. I love that a lot. You know, if you want to, you could uh, have a minifigure technically sitting on top of it there. But uh, I really like the build for that. I think that's really great. Over here, we've got a little Dunder Mifflin 2x2 two two tile. Love the logo and everything there. And a bunch of different folders and things like that. This wall actually belongs to accounting. It's right behind uh, Angela's desk. We've got uh, these little units here. Nothing in the top one, but the bottom one actually has a little kitten, which I believe is meant to represent bandit from uh, one of the most iconic openings uh, but she also has like other cats I, I don't think that necessarily have names also uh, nothing inside here either no hidden weapons from Dwight trust me we will get to them <laughs> Back out here to the front, we have a chair, and let's check underneath there. Nothing hidden, but we do have a little potted plant there, as well as feel like one of the most iconic stickers in the set. Uh, Pam's painting there on the wall of the building that they all work in here, and uh, you can remove it if you want to, you know, as you take it on your way out. Uh, anyways. The rest here, you've got like the blinds and uh, it's really cool that uh, they are repeated. You've got different uh, panels here for the different offices. Now, if you want to, technically you could remove the panels and swap them out. You just got to remove some of like the bookshelves and things like that in the way over here. But uh, the idea and reason that I'm saying this is so that you can actually, you know, if you want to have a meeting in Michael's office, you can have the blinds closed here and then you can have uh, the blinds completely open to see into the conference room. So I like that you have that ability to do that and you could swap them out there as well if you want to have the blinds open for Michael's office. All right, let's start here with Jim and Dwight's little desk clump. So here we've got a computer on his desk where he's got, I guess, his uh, little shroot farms airbnb that he's running as well as he's got the little bobblehead that angela gives him it's sort of weak i feel like they could have included the baby head with the printing to create a bobblehead or just printed that i think that's such a disappointment that there's nothing there uh the phone is the exact same sticker that you'll see repeated throughout the different sets because they're on the swivel chair the chairs when you remove the figures pop off sometimes but uh he's got a mouse a mug and uh yeah a number of different things there but of course with dwight he this is where some of the secret weapons i guess are included we've got uh, some throwing stars there and then nothing included in the bottom drawer over here on this little bookshelf, you could see that you've got the stapler in the jello, as well as in the bookshelf. I don't really see, or the little unit, I don't really see too many references. The only thing that I can think of there, seeing those colored studs, it makes me think of Lego games with like all of the currency and stuff like that. Not sure, just tossing that out there. You've got a, also a little a name display there for Dwight Kurt Schrute. Now, if you were to remove some of the boxes, which are also uh, actual colors of Dunder Mifflin boxes, you could see here next to this a really great potted plant that's like growing really tall. There's also a sword included there for Dwight that's hidden in behind those boxes. Over here with Jim's desk, again, you could see the conversation that he's having with Pam, like I mentioned before. He's got a couple of different things, sticky notes, I think, on his desk, a keyboard, the same phone, a little lamp that can swivel and raise up and down, which, by the way, all the computers can also turn and, and things like that. So, you know, like sometimes he'll show Pam his computer or whatever. And back over to here, we have, like, I think that was an award above that hole in the wall, which, if you're curious, you could actually fix. Unfortunately, Andrew Bernard, the Nard Dog, is not included in the set, but the hole in the wall is I guess he's off to anger management with Aaron, who's also not here. But yeah, when you're building this, it does give you the option to actually include the hole in the wall, or you could use this one by two brick to do that. Now we're gonna go into Michael's office, which is actually completely removable. All you do here is slide this on out. So here is Michael's office on its own, and there's so many references and things like that to go through here, but let's just work our way through. So over here, you've got a couple of different seats to hold meetings in his office, as well as, I was wrong before, you actually do have a blinds sticker there, so yeah, I, I like that. You've got a map, I believe, of Dunder Mifflin up there, as well as, I'm not sure exactly all the things that are on his desk. Let me know here, I mean the bookshelf, what that actually is with everything there, if you can think of any references, besides the obvious one, like a globe 
and uh, maybe some awards or I I'm not really too sure. Over here, you've got a leadership poster and another like painting. Down below on that little small dresser, you've got a golden ticket, which is a reference to the Willy Wonka idea that he had, which I think is crazy that that's being referenced here. On top of like this giant bookshelf, you've got a little stud meant to represent the radon test kit that Toby leaves. And that's a very iconic and funny intro, I feel like. You've got a lamp. It's very tight to get inside there. But you've also got a little uh, coat rack there, a small one. You've got a bullhorn, I believe. Of, uh, not necessarily the right color, but I think that's what that's meant to represent. You've got a plant in the corner, as well as a little degree there for Michael Scott. And he's pretty patriotic there with the eagle and the American flag. You've got some blinds there, as well as now on his desk, right in the front, you've got a Dundee. Great to have an official build for that, uh, as well as the world's best boss coffee mug which is just beyond iconic i feel like and taking a look at his desk here you could see that he's actually got a different print on his phone because jan levinson Gould is calling him as well as you've got a little sticker there for the sticky note of a little doodle that pam leaves him during like his meetings and then there he's listening to a song and i believe it's the one when he's broken up with and uh, he just keeps pressing play instead of actually buying it uh, and just listening to the few seconds of that but that is Michael's office. Just kidding. There's actually a really hilarious reference here underneath the whole desk. I believe that little poop piece is meant to represent uh, the prank that is left in his office. So yeah, that that's pretty crazy that's included. Also, there's a few things here. I just remembered as I was shaking it. Nothing in the top drawer, but in the bottom one, there is his little doodle of the poster for his movie threat level midnight so that's what michael's office looks like here from this angle you just slide it on through there and uh, you're good to go now i want to carry over here and like look at the conference room which is next up i guess on our tour here so on the inside of the conference room i've actually got ryan having this meeting and you've got a couple of people in attendance there you've got a total of six seats for you to actually have the meeting got the painting there, which looks cool uh, in that little sticker. So in the conference room, there's a number of different things that you can actually customize. Let's start with the TV here. Underneath, by the way, you've got a VHS tape as well as a VHS player. Now, uh, on this build, you've got this 2 by 3 tile, which has a sticker there of Dwight and Michael's Scrantonicity. Uh, but you could swap it out for the time that they were all trying to watch the DVD little logo as it bounced around, try and get into the corner when they weren't listening to Michael. Or you've got uh, Ryan when he was launching the Dunder Mifflin website and Kelly went up and put the pizza on the TV and smudged it there, which I think is really crazy. Now over here on this little, I guess, portable whiteboard uh, that you could rip like the big sheets of paper off of, you could see them trying to tell Michael that he is in a pyramid scheme uh, as well. You can remove that. Then you've also got this here with the don't, don't bother Luke included, but we're not done here. Over here on the wall, you could see that we've got this little banner for Diversity Day Take Two, which is just such an iconic uh, episode, I think. So awesome that you've got that. Or you could also print out the banner for the It Is Your Birthday period uh, for Kelly's birthday, which she has an accessory, which also ties into that. Last but certainly not least in our tour of the office, we've got the rest of the sales department, which there's a number of different references. One really crazy one up here on this box is actually a Homer Simpson doll that is uh, present in so many episodes of the show. You've got another no smoking sign there. I guess, wait, that's 62 stickers. I forgot to count that one. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't really recognize anything in the shelves there. Let me know if you do. Over here on Phyllis's desk, I'm not sure what exactly that's meant to be in behind there. Uh, let me know if, if you can think of that. Maybe a Kleenex box. It certainly looks like that. But on her computer, she's got Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration's uh, little website, which I think is great since that is her husband. And uh, just removing the seat, you can see that she's got the phone. As well as let's check here if she's got anything stored inside. Nothing there for her. 
Spinning it around here on Andy's desk, you can see he's got the little Dunder Mifflin logo there, as well as the keyboard and mouse and same phone that everyone else has. Over here on Stanley's desk, he's got a number of different things. I'm not sure what that's meant to be on his desk. Maybe it's a train or a car, uh, but uh, you could see he's got a phone as well as in his drawers, there is actually a little nickel. Why would there be a nickel? Well, because that is a reference to his little Stanley nickel comment to Dwight. You've got another little award there on that pillar, as well as on his computer screen is the temporary or the original website saying coming soon for Dunder Mifflin. And then very lastly here, we've also got a little potted plant there, as well as we saw this unit before when I removed it, but there's a stapler, which is a different like design since the uh, one on, I can't do it without uh, here on the bookshelf. You can see uh, the one in Jello. It's like an actual stapler. And uh, here you've also got this little, you know, canister, the garbage can where Dwight starts the fire. Just remembered as well, there is this sticker next to Dwight's desk of the Froggy 101, which is actually a radio station, a real life radio station. And here is Michael Scott. And I cannot believe that I have him here in front of me in Lego form. Like, oh my goodness, it's so surreal. But unfortunately, the mug is a bit misprinted there. You can see on the worlds uh, and best is fine, but boss is smudgy as well. I don't know what happened there, but regardless, I love the suit that they've got for him. The facial expression, I think they really captured here. The back of the suit has a little bit of printing as well. And then here he's also got this really like happy expression. And I love the tongue in the coral color for him. Also with Michael included is this two by four tile with the sticker on it for the check that he writes out for the rabies cure fun run. And each of the minifigures that you actually build as you go through, they each have their own accessory. And I think that's really cool. It's almost like it's a minifigure series and this is the accessory that they would have given with him. The mug is actually from the table, his office table build, but I thought that I would show it up close. Here's Jim Halpert, and I forgot to show, but the ring was actually at the bottom drawer of his desk, so that is included with him, as well as this envelope, meant to be the letter that he gives to Pam with her accessory, which you'll see in a second. I think that the torso printing looks great. I feel like, you know, we could have used some belt printing here to sort of have their shirts and everything tucked in, but regardless, it still is very fitting. I actually think Luke's hair here in reddish brown works quite well. Here's the back torso printing and the back head printing here. I, that's Jim. Like, they, they captured it so well there. Like, here is Pam Beasley, and I love this figure. The fact that she's got the dual molded legs there looks great. But uh, a few things that I don't like about it. The face, I don't think really works for her. I think the expression is good. It's just the eyebrows. She does not have black eyebrows. Also, the teapot I think is the wrong color. I just would not have gone with that. But uh, I think the hair piece works well for her. I could have maybe gone for like the medium nougat, but I still think that's fine. Uh, again, I think the facial expression works and she's got this scared expression because this isn't actually like, it's not a face created for Pam. This has been used before already. Here is Dwight Kurt Schrute, and he is really awesome here. Look at even like the little wrinkle above the glasses for his facial expression. It looks so great. They really capture that, and I love how he's got the belt printing there as well. He does actually have a Schrute buck uh, when he became manager there, and again, tied into Stanley's accessory that you saw on his desk. I love that. That is a sticker. And uh, on the back, he's got some back torso printing. I think the hair piece as well works really great for him. It was it was born to be used for Dwight, um, but if the hair piece decides to remove, there we go. On the other side, he's got this smiling expression. Again, I think they captured his likeness and a lot of people's really well. Here is Kevin Malone, and the amount of times that I've accidentally, unintentionally <laughs> spilled the chili pot is really funny. So he can hold it like this, but of course, he can also hold it from the handles. But, uh, you know, you yourself were more likely, trust me, to spill it uh, when holding it the way that I just showed. But I love the torso printing there. It's really great. The face print is awesome, and the, the hair, I think that's pretty funny with the, the printing there. It doesn't really work too well with how the black is printed there or... Or, yeah, I don't know. You could see how it's sort of blurry there. I feel like that happened with my George figure as well from last year. But inside the chili pot is a couple of studs here 
uh, to actually represent the, the chili there. Here is Angela Martin, and I think that the face works great for her. I really love her accessory here, this two by four tile with the sticker of the uh, the baby poster that Oscar hates, I think looks great. And uh, her torso printing, it's very, very fitting. And uh, you know, if I were to remove the hair piece here, you could see her back face print. She does smile sometimes, so I think that it's pretty fitting. And the back torso printing is great. However, the absolute worst part about this figure, and I will die on this hill, I don't know why Lego did this. It's such a missed opportunity, not just comedically, but just accuracy. Mid legs, mid legs exist, Lego. Come on now, she's short. We know it, she knows it. Like, it, it works so much better. Like, look at her next to Dwight here. He's super tall. It just, it adds so much to have mid legs. Here is Creed Bratton, and he's actually got for his accessory the little mung bean there, which is a funny reference. Again, we'll, we'll break it all down, but I think that the face looks great for him, the torso printing as well. It's actually using Michaels, but you know, there's so many figures in here. I don't really mind that they reuse some torso printings, but uh, with him, he has hair. I, I don't know why Lego didn't do this. It's very simple. Boom. I think that adds so much to him. This, this hair piece, he needed that. And you could have also included this same hair in black when he dyed it black. Like, it just would add, I think this adds so much to him. I think it completes him. Here's Meredith Palmer, and she's actually using a ton of parts just reused, which I guess, like, the, the torso, I think, actually works quite well for her. I, I don't know what the face, though, uh, but her accessory is great. The bat and also the coffee. I have a feeling it's not coffee in there. But, yeah, I, I think the hair piece for her, it's fine. It, it works quite well for that. But uh, removing the hair piece here, you can see on the back, she's got this scared expression, which is good for the bat, and uh, the back torso printing there as well. Here is Phyllis Lappin Vance, and they nailed the, the likeness of this figure. It is really, really awesome. She's actually using May's face, I believe, from Overwatch. So that's pretty cool. I think that it works really well for her, the back torso printing and the front torso printing. Like, it's very iconic. They even got, like, the little brooch on her uh, collar there is awesome. The chopstick pieces used for the knitting needles is amazing, as well as this transparent piece there. Um, that is actually a, a sticker, I believe. Yeah, that's a sticker. I almost said it was a print, but looks great. She's knitting the mittens. I think perfect reference. Here is Stanley Hudson, and he is amazing. I love his accessory there with the crossword puzzle. Using this piece, like the actual uh, book piece, I think works great for the book cover because it's almost like he's holding on to the almost folded over parts of a newspaper. I think that works perfectly. Really great. The accessory, the pretzel, iconic, awesome. And his face, I think they really nailed his expressions and all that. I think it looks great. The hair piece as well, I think works really well for him. And removing the hair here, you can see on the back, he's got <laughs> this just Stanley expression. It's just perfect. Here's Oscar Martinez, and he looks phenomenal. I love the color that they chose for the shirt. It works really great, as well as the, the face print. Really love this expression for him, and the calculator piece I think looks great. Uh, the hair, awesome choice, uh, perfect for him. And spinning it around here on the back, you could see he's got this sort of concerned expression. I, I think that the back torso printing is great too. Really captured his likeness. Here's Ryan Howard, and I think it's really interesting the face that they have here for him. I think it works great. They really capture it. He's actually using Jim's torso, which is fine, I guess, but he's got a cell phone. He's always on it. But what I love about this figure is that here on the back, if I remove the hair, you could see or turn it around, he's actually got his stubble look included. Like, how awesome is that? And I feel like this face as well is going to be used for a ton of different sig figs and things like that. I think they captured it really well there. I think that I'm glad they, they you know, instead of just reusing someone else's face, like looking at that there, they could use the Ezra Bridger and the Shang-Chi face perfectly for that but instead they decided to do the stubble which i guess you know he didn't get a new torso but i think that's much better here is kelly kapoor and she looks awesome as well i love the colors here that they have for her outfit uh her accessory is the cake that she gets again going back to the conference room reference i think that's really awesome um but uh there the torso like look at the printing 
absolutely phenomenal. And here on the back as well, looks great. Her facial expression, they really captured that as well for her. And just uh, removing that there, you could see the face on her own. And then on the back, like she's got this other really happy expression. Really great from Mindy Kaling. And last but certainly not least is Daryl Philbin and it looks really awesome. I love so many things about this. The reference here is really interesting. Again, you know, stay tuned for that. I'm plugging in a lot in this video, but I think the face here, it's, you know, it's fine. I think it works great for him. The hair piece, it's not quite as big, I feel like, as his actual hair. But uh, what I love about the torso here is I'll show you what I did in my original minifigure series. Because the torso printing actually doesn't have like the name Daryl written there, it could be any warehouse worker. And that's what you can recreate here with Jim or Dwight or Michael. And I love that. I really appreciate that. Even the fact that the like the collar there at the neck, it doesn't show the skin color that it is able to be used for anyone. You could buy multiple of this torso to have your own warehouse. I, I really just thoroughly appreciate that. and. The fact that we can recreate this meme beyond me. Anyways, back to Daryl here. I do want to show you the back face printing there. There's nothing, unfortunately. And I don't know why they chose to use this face here from Black Panther. But, you know, I think that it still works great because of the big smile, which Daryl, I feel like when I picture him, is always smiling. So here is the instruction manual. And it's like, look how awesome this is. You've got the office logo up at the top. You've got it on this desk, a clump of crumpled up paper, some sticky notes, and even a, a knockoff permanent marker Dunder Mifflin folder. And then here on the back, you've got a whole uh, sheet there, a whole package of paper, some paper clips. Oh my goodness, what a great instructions manual already. But uh, here, let's flip through here because it, it doesn't stop there. You could see here, Little advertisement saying paper bags are coming. Are they though? Are they? It's almost 2023. Anyways, um, looks great. A little lifestyle photo there. And, and flipping through here, you can pause and read if you'd like uh, the different uh, things about the office. Got a couple of fun little references there over here. You got a quote from Michael Gary Scott. And then here as well. You've got a couple of the different parts of the set that we've shown already. You can pause it there to read. And over here, a little quote from Pam with a picture of Jim and Pam at reception. We'll start here. This is the fan designer. This is my friend JJ. And uh, yeah, a huge congrats, man. I love the photo as well that they did for him here. Uh, meet the fan designer there. And look at that. If I look at it overall, I've been working on this for nearly seven years. That is insane. Insane. Congratulations, man. And then these are the uh, actual designers. These two are an actual married couple that designed the set together. And this is the graphic designer. So really awesome. You should definitely... They act, There's like been news articles on these two, by the way. Um, they're Canadian. But anyways... Anyways, uh, you can pause and read about them. Really awesome. And then it jumps into things here. I'm sure that they have like the little uh, mentions or references. No, I guess not. I'm just flipping through here. They don't talk about it. But that's what my video is for. Don't, don't read the instructions references. Re re watch my video. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Lego The Office set. And huge congratulations to my friend JJ for getting this set made and not giving up. I think that's a real testament and, and good lesson for people when submitting ideas, projects. Sometimes, sometimes people need to let a dream go because modulars are never going to get selected. Anyways, I really love this set. It is one of my all-time favorite sets of all time. It's my favorite show of all time. I can't believe that I have this. I really want to do expansions for the rest of the main bullpen and the rest of the conference room, the you know little kitchen area and the bathrooms and the annex. Oh my goodness. And oh, I just want to do it all. The warehouse, everything, everything, everything. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts though. What do you think of this? Be sure to subscribe turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on future lego the office videos because i do have a few other fun ideas besides that reference video that i mentioned about 20 times in this video so hope you guys did enjoy the video hope you all have a great day i will catch you all on the flippity flip